So I'd like to talk a bit about percussion now. What do I mean by percussion? Well, some people mistakenly think that percussion means drum kit. And yes, they're from the same family, sure. You know, a snare drum is orchestral percussion, for example. But what happens if you've got something that's going like a slow groove on drums, bass and guitar, let's say. How do you make it sort of, how do you wake it up and how do you get, how do you convey the sort of, um, the faster figures? So if you're playing beats, just a four beat on the hi-hat, then maybe you want to go to the chorus and you're playing the ride cymbal now. Tambourine is the obvious sort of example and shaker and sort of claves and things to actually allow a little bit more life to be given. Lots of percussion is also quite trebly, so it plays into the hands of the sort of EQ battle as well. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to record a backing track, just a very simple backing track with drums, bass, and keyboards only. So I'm going to choose a tempo of 60. So this is slow. So. That sort of thing. Okay, here we go. So, a badly played drum rhythm, but hopefully it will become all clear when I quantize it, or rather it will be quantized because it's the first track on here. Now, don't get me wrong, space on a recording is very important. You don't want to fill things up. But subtle percussion can really make all the difference. Now I'm going to put um, a bass sound down. Let's have a look. Let's find P bass. That's my favourite one on here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, just to aid the recording, I'm going to speed it up a bit so that I can just record the parts quickly and then slow it back down. <laughs> Okay, so do the same thing with the piano and just try and remember the chords I put in. Uh, let's have a look. Keyboard, more sounds. Uh, keyboard, uh, whirly. Let's have something quite deep. So. So I'm going to slow that tempo back down to 60 now, having just quantized these instruments as well. Quantization straight, 16th, and the same with the whirly. Straight, 16th. And let's slow that back down to the original tempo of 60. There we go. So I'm going to take the metronome away now, so I'm not hearing that sort of clicky sound, just so we're just hearing the instruments on their own. Now, similar to Drummer, the app that plays you an automatic drum rhythm, you can get percussion as well, which is rather nifty. So if I go to Drummer and hit percussion, I then, basically have a very similar 
uh, interface to the drummer app. So if I play this back now, you'll hear something that goes over the top. The original groove is still there, but we have something that just lifts it a little bit. Now, yes, it may be too much, but you can make things a bit simpler by moving the little yellow dot to simple, perhaps, and even maybe a little bit softer as well. I'm going to take away the claves because actually they're the things that I'm not quite so sure of. So if we just press that to disable them. Now, ideally, I'd like to have something slightly different in the chorus. I want to wake the percussion up a bit. So I'm going to split this at bar five, like this. Now you can edit the two halves of your percussion separately. So if I go to this one, I can now add the triangle and the claves, make it a bit louder and a bit more complex. I could try varying the sliders, or I can put this all in by myself, on my own by just recording percussion sounds on on the um, on an interface rather than an automatic thing. I could always try a different preset here as well, but let's just listen to the last beat, the last bar of the quiet bit before it then goes to the ride cymbal. So I've kind of got a, a four bar verse and a four bar chorus. So I've maintained the original groove there, but I've got two very different approaches with the percussion. So if I go back to the main window, there is my percussion there. I'm just going to mute that for now and try another approach. This time you can have little pads that give you the same sound. They're great, those little um, bells. I mean, I've, I've seen a few gigs with people that use them a little bit too often, but you know, it's fine. So if I now record, I'm gonna do, try some percussion of my own. Okay, so I had 30 second notes because I was going. I had eight of those per beat. Helps if you're a chain smoker, I think, with those faster things. But so if I just go and. Now, before I quantize, sometimes it might be a bit more realistic, perhaps, if your percussion is ever so slightly off like it was there and of course it doesn't matter if one of them's off you don't have to quantize everything because we can just go into the edit window and just have a look at the timing of individual things should a problem arise so I'm just going to check to see whether they've been quantized or not. They have. Okay. If I just go to none now and see what happens. A 
couple of them are pushing the beat ever so slightly. But I quite like that at the moment. I mean, there's a couple of, there are a couple of notes that I would tweak timing wise, but all this has done is make it sound a little bit more realistic, perhaps a little bit more human. Don't forget 60 BPM is pretty slow. So you'd be forgiven for there being perhaps the odd slight rhythmic indiscretion perhaps. But if I go to the, the um, chorus now, I'm not overly unhappy with that. <laughs> I mean, there are a few things that I would change, but you know, it's okay. Now, level wise, I would probably take them down a little bit. You want to be very careful with the level of your percussion, unless you're Phil Spector, of course, with a tambourine going like this, right in your face. But that whole wall of sound sort of um, production, um, it's pretty, it's, it's quite clever. It's pretty sort of innovative and um, quite daring. I mean, you only really notice it when you really listen to some of those old recordings. And you realize that the, the tambourine is trying to bash you in the head while you listen to it. But there is a sort of an approach to percussion. Now, of course, the, you can add more percussion tracks if you like as well. Maybe I didn't do the triangle uh, last time. There's all sorts of things like pots and pans and coffee shop and a Chinese kit, which is quite nifty. The possibilities are so endless with this. It might be a Chinese kit, but what's wrong with it going over a, a G minor groove? But, you know, it's something, something that you can use. And in my um, video about scales that I made earlier, you know, what's wrong with trying, you know, the Klezmer scale or the Japanese scale or something over something like this? You never know what's going to happen. That's the magic of this. Not only that, you can change everything afterwards. So that symbol that I played at the end, I can just get rid of that. I think it was that one. Yes, it was. Let's get rid of that as well. You can see the symbol, symbols up and down the so rather symbols with an S of all the uh, the drums that you can tweak. So there it is. There's a bit of percussion, and it really can wake up a recording that's otherwise lacking something. 